So hi everyone, um, I'm Thibaut, uh, I'm a research engineer at Cloudflare. Um, and today I'm gonna to present um, how you can leverage uh, Cloudflare to browse the web um, and to host your application like more, more easily and make it more accessible. So first of all, uh, who am I? Uh, quick, who am I? Um, so I'm a research engineer at Cloudflare, uh, working on like various projects, but like um, most of all on distributed web projects such as IPFS and Ethereum, um, gateways, um, HTTP gateway that we're operating. I like Croissant, um, so if you meet at some point, like definitely uh, feel free to um, catch one. Of course, like for now, uh, it's like the situation is like a bit more virtual, um, so definitely like um, feel free to take like a virtual Croissant and a virtual coffee um, as we go through the presentation. What we're going to talk about today is uh, first of all have like a quick demo of uh, what system um, Cloudflare has at the moment uh, to um, offer on the um, HTTP interface. Um, and then how you can use Cloudflare to browse the D-Web, more specifically IPFS. So first of all, before we dive in, um, Cloudflare has been operating, I think as Dietrich mentioned, like um, IPFS gateway for like the last three years. Um, we operate both a public gateway um, that everyone can like access um, and also provide X509 certificate, which are like so-called SSL certificates um, for every internet properties um, and website that are like hosted on IPFS. And so that, that allows um, these um, this domain and these internet properties to um, serve their content to customers in a secure way and in, a, in an interoperable way uh, with the current uh, web ecosystem. Over time, we have run multiple experiments um, over the network. So like this include like providing verifiable responses for IPFS gateway um, via an extension. Um, we also operate like a subdomain gateway uh, for quite some time and have increased our appearing over time to provide uh, better content and faster um, resolution uh, for content hosted by IPFS. Finally, we are like, um, I think like as of now, one of the heaviest um, IPF users of the IPFS network and definitely um, looking uh, for experimenting and like gathering um, it, like more, um, provide a better service uh, to, to, to everyone um, using it and leverage uh, the, the network that we have already. So in terms of the demo, uh, it won't be like an interactive demo, but definitely if you want to go, I will like go through steps um, and share the link with you so you can like reproduce uh, more easily. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to like onboard the domain for like Tibor Corporation, uh, like big corporation that has just started, uh, not registered yet. Um, and uh, Tibor Corporation, they want to host um, their domain, which is ipfs.tibor.uk on IPFS and use Cloudflare to serve it. So it's like, served in every um, edge location, like served through um, uh, like a secure TLS connection. To do that, we're gonna like leverage multiple services. So of course, Cloudflare IPFS. We're also gonna leverage Cloudflare DNS um, to provide like an, an, easy, an easy recognizable name, which the brand already has, which is IPFS UK. And then finally, we're gonna use the next node provider to pin our content on the IPFS network, and we're gonna use pin attack for that. In the end, we're just going to configure the domain, um, use an IP IPFS client um, with remote pinning capability, and now that's like supported on most um, IPFS clients since to work um, on recent client collab, um, and use a web browser to like browse um, the web. So first of all, you want to publish your content to IPFS, and like that's done like technically three lines, but um, the first line is like to generate the content. So I want to generate um, a page uh, for for the home page. So this could be like either like your static homepage, but definitely you can leverage build systems um, to output some content. So we're gonna like output that in an index HTML. We're gonna start the IPFS daemon so we can have the content available to the IPFS network. And finally, we'll add the content to IPFS. Um, and for, so from that point, we like our content is like served so through IPFS. To go through the um, so steps, I will share like this link later on where you have all the steps in the command um, I display here. Then you want to pin uh, your content to a public pinning service. So like this is um, meant for uh, two things. Um, so content can stay um, available and being served even when your computer is offline because we were running the IPFS daemon, uh, but we want to pin it. You can pin it to one service or multiple services, uh, which provide like more reliability to the content. Here I'm going to use Pinata. So um, I use like Pinata API with a GWT and I have a CID, which is a CID of the content um, I just added before. Then I remote, um, uh, I want to pin the service uh, using the IPFS client. So you use IPFS pin 
and you pin the content that you have. Um, so the uh, identifier by the CID um, and you pin it to Pinata and then it's available. So even if I turn off my computer, I can still access the content through Cloudflare IPFS gateway at cloudflareipfs.com slash IPFS slash CID, which I mean, it's great. Um, that means that's good, but like um, I don't want my customer to access the content through cloudflareipfs.com slash IPFS slash CID, which is like quite um, terrible to look at. Um, and so we want to add IPFS.tbo.uk as a source for the content. And so that's where the Cloudflare comes in. Um, and we have two steps of configuration. So the first step uh, for the configuration to, to, to take place um, is we need to add like um, on the DNS name, a C name for um, IPFS uh, record for the IPFS subdomain. And we will point it to cloudflareipfs.com. This way, all the content going to IPFS.tbo.uk will go actually to cloudflareipfs.com and the gateway will be able to serve the content. So the second thing is a protocol which is called DNS Link, uh, which has been uh, pushed by uh, IPFS and like very well integrated. Um, and so that allows you to specify the content you want to serve within, um, within DNS and within a DNS text record. So by creating an underscore DNS link.ipfs uh, record on tbo.uk, I will be able to add the content that this domain points to. And so when the request going to the IPFS gateway um, uh, will land in, the IPFS gateway will be able to know the content it needs to serve for that domain, looking at the DNS, DNS record. This is very similar to what Makoto mentioned early on with the content hash, except this time it like embeds within DNS. Then the next thing you would like to do um, is to have a TLS certificate and you do that by going to cloudflareipfs.com and just at the bottom, um, you will be able to submit uh, your, your domain um, and by clicking submit, we'll provision a certificate for you. And so every time a customer will ask, access ipfs.tv.uk, it will be made through TLS connection. And so we have like the little um, uh, famous green log that will appear um, on the top of, of the search bar. Of course, there are like a few commands you can run uh, to make sure that like your domain is properly configured. And this is uh, regardless if using Cloudflare or any other gateway. Um, so you need to, to be sure that like your, your domain will be served um, through a gateway. So in our case, we configured through, uh, through Cloudflare. So you just run this, um, this D command to make sure like that's configured. And finally, you also want to make sure you have the DNS link configured. So you do like another lookup uh, for the text record and you will see the contents properly um, configured there. So now that you have some content hosting on IPFS, you may want to browse um, the D-Web uh, a bit deeper. And actually there's like a lot uh, of ways to do that. And like, that's what I call the original trilogy because like mostly there's three ways through HTTP to browse the D-Web. Um, and those three ways um, of, for HTTP, there are like three um, independent uh, ways, independent gateway. Usually the most popular thing you will see the most would be like with, for Cloudflare at least, would be with cloudflareipfs.com which is a pass gateway. Um, and definitely that would be the most visible usage uh, of Cloudflare if you uh, navigate the web because you will see cloudflareipfs.com everywhere. So that presents as like cloudflareipfs.com slash IPFS or IPNS, depending if it's a domain with CID, slash um, the CID or the content. So that's great because like it clearly makes a distinction between like who's serving it and which content you're serving then. The thing is uh, the way web browser are designed as of now, uh, you will not benefit from um, same origin uh, policy and isolation. So definitely why this is like a great and easy way, um, this is probably not the way uh, you would like to brand the D-Web. The way we presented just before is using example.com directly um, with the domain configured with TNS link and pointing directly to a gateway. Um, it's definitely like the most uh, flexible way to access the gateway uh, because you could point it to a uh, class of gateway to like another gateway as well. Um, while you have uh, something very transparent, you have the domain which is provided directly. And so it presents as example.com directly, you have uh, your, own, um, your own same origin policy. The only thing you won't have um, with this is like you won't be able to configure um, all the policy you want if you're passing through a gateway. Um, so that's also to be considered. Finally, one um, thing that has been um, pushed like recently and like there's a lot more effort going um, on, on that way because it's definitely more secure um, is using a subdomain gateway. So like as of now, like it's cfipfs.com or dweb.plink for instance for 
for that. Um, this is like something that has like still low usage, uh, but it's very neat in a way that you're able to have like example.com embedded just below uh, a domain. So it's like a distinct um, domain and a domain of its own. And so that allows you to have um, same origin policy and isolation, um, which is very great. Um, and that's something which is integrated in like web browsers, uh, both um, like Brave and Opera uh, are for now like using this way for resolving content, um, which makes it like far more secure. And so then on like um, web security, when you're like going through um, using HTTP gateways, um, definitely providing like an external certificate for users um, is important. You don't want like your, um, when browsing, having like an HTTP um, connection only. Um, you want to like leverage uh, what has been done with security of the web, even so it's not the same protocol as IPFS for like convenience, uh, having X509 certificates like uh, rather important. It may not be compatible with all the name resolution service, um, especially uh, with new uh, name systems. Um, and so that's definitely why, uh, for instance, when we operate East.link, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we provided um, X509 certificate for all the domain that, um, uh, are on the uh, .east domain. Also, something to um, keep in mind is the course rule for the gateway are usually very loose um, and are set by the gateway, not content owner. And because we have to serve um, the content for various users, like these rules are for now like rather loose and usually like we have access origin allowed um, for everything. Definitely, if you want something more tight, um, that's something you can contact us or contact um, like the gateway provider to, to adjust. Finally, IPFS provides um, immutable content that can be accessed like via the CID, but um, that doesn't uh, mean that like sometimes the request of the CIDs that you will ask for may not be accessible. It may like time out because your node is not well connected. Uh, it may time out because like the content is actually has never been stored um, on IPFS. Um, and one feature which is like um, super great, uh, which has been like added. Um, over last year is to, to provide custom for four pages. And so that really allows you to have um, flexibility on like how you want your website to be displayed. Um, so that's probably something you may want to leverage with the hackathon. Finally, some closing words. Um, is not what we've seen, the usage of IPFS is like growing really fast. Um, and one of the, um, the, 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 the hardest thing to do on IPFS is like leveraging names. Um, IPFS is immutable content, but when you want to make um, this content readable and accessible, you need to leverage names, um, and it's something which is like rather hard to do. And definitely, there's a lot of ways uh, that I invite you to explore um, through the next six weeks. In the end, um, IPFS and IPNS, and like more protocol, as like a lot of speakers before uh, presented, are getting integrated in browsers, and that's definitely like something which is also awesome because it provides local verifiability and more resilience. Um, at the same time. Uh, Cloud is like here to help um, still um, get the bridge uh, between IPFS and like the regular HTTP interface. Thank you for um, listening to me. And if you have questions, just know, like don't hesitate to, um, to to contact us through like either Discord or directly on cloudflyipfs.com.